So since my first video is uh, the PF Grid V2 has been pretty much completely sunset. So some of the steps in this videos might be out of date and the migration from V2 to V3 is pretty much done as well. So all the hardware details and how to's are still valid, but just into a quick update video so that you can get your uh, any new machines you have online to V3 as quickly as possible without any confusion. Go ahead and put the threefold connect app on your phone or tablet. Uh, this is where you're going to have the wallet that you get your monthly rewards on. Make sure you copy down the seed phrase for your wallet somewhere safe and go ahead and put your address, your wallet address in your clipboard for use later. Everything is going to be registered through the TF chain, TF chain portal. If you haven't been here before, you're going to have to install the Polkadot.js extension into your browser. This is basically going to handle your account and the TF chain portal. So go ahead and add one in Polkadot. Save this phrase, keep it safe. I'll name the account. Cool. We'll go back to the portal. Sign in, pretend like you read this, and accept. Oop. These transactions are a little slow. Cool, first thing it's going to prompt you to is to create a twin. You don't need to edit this for now or maybe ever, uh, sign the transaction, excellent. So you're gonna create a farm. You only need to create one farm for all your nodes. You don't need a new farm for each node. Name it whatever you want. Sign the transaction. For some annoying reason today, farm creation is failing. But right here, your farm would show up, and underneath it, there'd be a little button to put in your wallet address. You'll click there and copy, paste in your wallet address from your TF Connect app. If you really need to see it, my upgrading from V2 to V3 video does show a successful farm creation. Now to set up the software to run on your three node, you're gonna be creating two bootable USB drives. So have this handy. I like to use Rufus. You can also use Belina Etcher. You simply download it from their website. All the rules about wiping the drives are just the same as last time. My preferred tool to use is the GRML Live Linux. Those wiping commands are still the same as they used to be. I will paste them below as well. Of course, like in the building videos before, you will need to get into your BIOS to set your machine to boot from USB and load up GRML. Same commands as before works really well. You can also use a live Ubuntu uh, disk, in which case your commands are slightly different. sudo wipe fs tag a <laughs> wipe the device and hit enter. And that'll wipe it in Ubuntu, a little different than the GRML.
Now, when creating your bootable USB that you boot from your uh, three node from, you enter the farmer ID, which you would get from, from over here if it had worked today, and you enter it here. 55. Make sure production is selected. And you have lots of options. Your EFI image is going to be for any um, normal PC you're using. Um, desktops, uh, Nukes, or uh, Lenovo micro PCs. If you're using a serious commercial server, using this option here is your most reliable. Or even burning a CD from this IO, ISO image will work. I will go into this more detail in the following videos regarding Dell and HP servers. So you take this file, you go into Rufus, and you select your download, select your image, um, oh yeah, yes, yeah, select your image. Select your USB, select your image, and um, write that to your drive, put that into your device, boot it up, and it should basically all be automatic from then. You might get some errors. It might look like it doesn't work at first, um, but you know, give it 20 minutes, go take a snack, and uh, come back, and it will probably be onboarded and working. If not, sometimes the network gets busy, and it can, get, uh, it, it, it can fail and boot if it's a busy day. Uh, just unplug it. There is no way to do a soft reboot and plug it back in and it'll probably work the second time. If not, go into the Telegram chat. We can help you out. We have never failed to get someone up and running, even on the weirdest machine. So it'll give it, it'll work. Um, finally, you're going to want to go over to the Explorer and find your node. Now, if you're showing us connected with your farm and node ID, when you plug your monitor into your three node, you are online, but it's good to verify that all of your resources are online. Let's just take this random one I selected here. And this is your solid state drives. It's showing four terabytes. If you had five installed, then maybe you forgot to wipe a drive. This is your RAM. If it's not all showing up, you might need to reseat your RAM. These are CRUs. Um, my opinion, they need to revise the language here to say threads because it is confusing. Some people for compute units, which is a related metric, but not the same thing. If this is half as many as you're expecting, you have logical cores or hyper-threading disabled in your BIOS. This rarely happens since the settings are on by default. And this is your uptime, which resets every time you reset your node. So this is all showing what you would expect it to be. You're all good, you're all set, and you shouldn't have to touch it. If you want to upgrade it, just un unplug it, put in it your additional drives, and wipe them, and it should automatically show up. Be careful if you take out any drives, because if you take out the wrong one with the cache disk, you will remove your node ID. I know this is a boring video, but this is going to reduce a lot of the questions that we're getting, and it should get you online real quick. So let me know if you have any questions below. I'll put all the links, and uh, yeah.